Burkina Faso is a country at war. Is it possible out of the melting pot has emerged the next great pan-African icon? Ibrahim Traore is young, handsome, and has given a cold shoulder to the colonial powers. People compare him to the legendary figure of Thomas Sankara. Can a man whose skills were forged on the battlefields of the Sahara go on to become Africa's next great leader? The world caught its first real glimpse of Traore at the Africa-Russia conference in July 2023. Standing beside the other suited presidents, Traore's six-foot stature and combat gear set him apart. He was by far the youngest delegate, but it was his words which made headlines. Taking a jab at his fellow presidents, he told the conference his generation were asking why their elders went begging to others. As far as what concerns Burkina Faso today, for more than eight years we've been confronted with the most barbaric, the most violent form of imperialist neocolonialism. Slavery continues to impose itself on us. Our predecessors taught us one thing. A slave who cannot assume his own revolt does not deserve to be pitied. We do not feel sorry for ourselves. We do not ask anyone to feel sorry for us. The people of Burkina Faso have decided to fight, to fight against terrorism in order to relaunch their development. Homeland or death, we shall conquer. Traore's speech went viral on the internet. There was something inspiring about a young president channeling a language of revolution which had its African heyday almost 50 years ago. But to understand Ibrahim Traore, one must first understand where he comes from. Burkina Faso is a landlocked country in West Africa. It is located on the Sahelian transition zone between the tropical forests of the West Coast and the arid dunes of the Sahara. The north of the country is mainly dry grassland, where a Fulani ethnic minority raise cattle as pastoralists. Towards the wooded south, the Mose become the most dominant ethnic group. The different climates and ethnicities are accompanied by different religious practices. A Muslim majority live alongside Catholics and traditional priests. Burkina Faso received its independence from France in 1960 and became known as Upper Volta, Military coups quickly became a kind of national tradition. Of the many presidents who came and left power this way, Thomas Sankara was by far the most famous. Sankara renamed the country and initiated a socialist revolution. Today he is remembered as a pan-African hero. His ambitious reform programs focused on eradicating corruption, protecting the environment, empowering women, and increasing access to education and healthcare. His connections to Latin American revolutionary leaders worried the Western powers. But his great contribution to the country was imaginary, the creation of a new national identity, the Burkina Bay. After his assassination, many of Sankara's policies were reversed, and the country returned to the Western sphere. But since 2014, Burkina Faso has experienced a rapid series of military coups, justified by economic problems and a growing insurgency in the north. Much of the soil in Burkina Faso has poor fertility, making the country heavily dependent on imports to feed its population. The slow pace of economic development compared to its neighbours has created a large migrant workforce. Roughly a third of working Burkinabes travel to neighbouring states to find jobs. Its reliance on foreign economies for jobs and goods makes Burkina Faso very vulnerable to changes in the global economy, often leading to social unrest. Compounding these problems has been a growing Islamist insurgency on its northern borders. From the 1990s, Islamist insurgents in North Africa have gradually trickled down into Mali and Burkina Faso. Although Burkina Faso has a history of carefully negotiating with Islamist leaders, Chaos in Mali and political instability in Burkina Faso led to the outbreak of an insurgency in 2015. Ansar ul-Islam, recruited from mainly Fulani groups, 
aggravating ethnic tensions and drawing on resentment over lack of development in the northern region. Winning the war against the terrorists has become even more important than the economy. Governments have risen and fallen promising victory over the enemy. And this is where we find Ibrahim Traore in 2020, at the heart of Burkina Faso's crisis, fighting on the front line, a respected capitaine with combat experience as a UN peacekeeper in Mali, known affectionately as IB. Looking back on his time as Capitan, Traore has recalled his frustration over the lack of equipment, three or four men to a Kalashnikov. He saw politicians arrive from the capital with suitcases full of money to do deals. Like the Islamist insurgents they were fighting, Burkina Faso's frontline soldiers felt neglected and exploited by the central government. With fellow army officers, Traore took part in the January 2022 coup, which aimed to instate a government that would properly support the war. Eight months later, with the situation in the north worsening, Traore led a second coup, this time establishing himself as president. Now at the heart of government, Traore found himself in an uncertain position. He had to deliver victory on the war and economy, or risk becoming the victim of a coup himself. Building on national nostalgia for Sankara, he began wearing a red beret, and ending his speeches with his predecessor's slogan. Just as insurgents were fought with guns on the battlefield, they would be fought with words and ideas in the media. Traore requested the departure of foreign troops, arguing Burkina Faso would defeat the jihadists by its own strength. With the departure of the French ambassador and the banning of French media, Traore earned few friends in the West. Newspapers in London and New York gossiped he would turn to the Russian Wagner Group for help. Instead, Traore revived a policy from the days of Sankara, funding armed community defense groups. This general mobilization of the population into volunteers for the defense of the homeland had several advantages. It created a political network loyal to Sankara within communities across the country, and it offered an armed force to counteract the threat of a coup from the military. Coming from Africa's most media-savvy generation, Traore targeted newspapers, radio stations, and the internet to spread a positive image of himself. Anonymous callers broadcast stories of his bravery. Organizations marching out of step with the new national narrative were warned or banned. In place of Western allies, Traore's government has sought to reforge connections with revolutionary leaders in the Americas. A warming relationship with Russia has helped secure funding and weapons. Most scandalous has been Traoré's decision to ignore sanctions from ECOWAS, the economic union which dominates West Africa. Instead, he has found allies in Mali and Niger. The three have created the Alliance of Sahel States, pledging to coordinate attacks against insurgents as well as encouraging closer economic ties. Traoré knows Burkina Faso's war is not just fought with guns. Ansar al-Islam have thrown communities into chaos by arguing they are fighting for social equality, justice, and good governance. To strengthen his power and stamp out corruption, Traore has launched a national hotline where citizens can report instances of corruption directly to the president. News of a deal to build a nuclear reactor with Russia hit the headlines. At the same time, the government announced the end of sales of uranium from Burkina Faso to America. The construction of a tomato processing plant was presented with as much fanfare as a military victory. In fact, by resetting the country's foreign relations, encouraging economic development, and promoting a sense of national dignity, Traore is targeting the grievances at the heart of insurgent propaganda. His decision to suspend democratic elections until the war in the north is won has not attracted much criticism in Burkina Faso. But IB is still walking a tightrope. He will have to keep close tabs on the military to avoid becoming the victim of a coup. He needs to keep delivering on the economy, and he must do all this whilst fighting a war on which his presidency rises or falls. Meanwhile, the arrival of 100 Russian mercenaries seems to conflict with his ambition to defeat the insurgents alone. Will Sankara's ghost keep Traore popular in Burkina Faso? And if so, will he be able to avoid Sankara's demise? An assassination allegedly masterminded by France. Only time will tell. If you enjoyed this content and would like more, 
please subscribe to The Africa Review on YouTube.